So today we're going to finalize um, the topic of um, ownership of physical phenomena. And of course, we're going to finalize the very little that is being presented in these studies because it's a very vast uh, topic of studies, especially um, when we come to, um, to more modern, modern research of communication between the two realms of existence, unrelated to spiritism, purely scientific. There is a lot of studies being done out there. Um, and if, if one really wants to study that in depth, we could spend the whole year easily talking about uh, physical phenomena of, of many types. Um, because last time I believe we did cover a little bit of direct writing, direct voice, but it was very rapidly. I wanna go back and, and, and do a little bit of that again. And uh, we start here on the slide that says direct writing and directed voice. We can move on. And pneumatography. I will read the slides for those who um, cannot see the screen, for those who are out using cell phones. And it's direct writing on pneumatography. Is the writing produced directly by a spirit without any intermediary? It differs, it differs from psychography, which is a transmission of a spirit through a writing. I'm sorry, let me start over. It, it differs from psychography, which is the transmission of a spirit's thought in the writing through a hand of a medium, writing held to be that of a spirit and produced directly without a medium or material voice. In Kardec's time, the direct writing was obtain, obtained in a slate stone. So what is it basically? It's, it's a communication that is done via writing, but does not require the, the hands of a medium or any other visible material. And that's very, very important. It does not require the hands of a, of a medium or any other visible material. And visible is, is important in word because there are material being used, but they're just not visible to our, our uh, physical eyes, okay? Uh, there was a lot of experiment done on that also. By the time of Kardec, uh, there was in, uh, a Frenchman, a noble Frenchman, by the name of Gudem Stube, they did tremendous amount of research on that. Uh, he was a medium of uh, physical effect. And he used to put paper without any pencil, without any other object inside of locked drawers, um, go through a prayer or something, wait for a while, open the drawer and that would be uh, uh, a note written on that piece of paper. and. Again, the, the drawer would be completely locked. There is no way to get in there. There will be no pencil, nothing inside of the drawer, only a blank piece of paper. And sometimes it would not happen as he opens in a half an hour, an hour. Sometimes you forget the piece of paper was there, come back two, two three days later, open the drawer and boom, there was a message up there, there written. Um, most of his work uh, was um, placed in a book by um, Gabriel Delane. Gabriel Delane is uh, also an spiritist who wrote this, this noble Frenchman did not write anything, but uh, most of his studies is described in a book of uh, Gabriel Delane, okay? <laughs> In, in usually, most of those those events would be take places with some kind of an audience. Most of the of the studies, for for two reasons: one, you want to have your friends along among you, and two, there was a need to to prove to anyone that there was no 
no fraud, no anything like that. So usually uh, they would invite, the meeting would invite a couple of people, some people to, to be some kind of audience and to be witness of the phenomenon itself and to make sure that there was no fraud, that there was uh, nothing else going on. And some of those witness, those, those um, people that was seeing the phenomenon, they would kind of describe that when the phenomenon was happening, there would be a different smell in the room. Uh, something like a burning like, a very settled, a burning like thing that, um, and the spirits later confirm that indeed, the type of the burning like was actually the, the spirits make using the ectoplasm to, to, to produce the material for the impression on the paper. So like to produce the, the ink, so to say in the paper. And the, basically they said there was two ways of doing this. They would kind of use their own material and create a impression on the paper. Like if you write with a pen with no ink. Although there is no ink, you can't see because there is no ink, but the, but the writing is imprinted on the paper. You understand? As if you write on the sand with your fingers, you can write your name on the sand. It's imprinted in the light, right? It's, you make an indentation on the sand that gives your name. When you write with a pen without an ink on a paper, it creates that indentation on the paper as well, right? So one of the means of making those those letters appear on the paper would be they would use their own material, create the imprinting on the on, on the paper, and then use the ectoplasm and create a ink-like material that would coat those indentations and, and form the 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 words of the letters that that now everyone could could see. And all the other way they could be done also, they could impregnate the whole piece of paper with ectoplasm and just write with their own material on top of that, on top of that paper that is now impregnated with the ectoplasm. And then the printing would be sustained because the, the ectoplasm would be fixed on that piece of paper. That was later re revealed by um, by students uh, the, like Delane, that they confirmed that the burn the burning like smell was actually the using of that ectoplasm created that printing material that ink material that was used to produce the painting to, to produce I'm sorry the the writing. Okay, Any questions. So we can move on to the next slide. Um, it's number no two in the next slide, but let me talk a little bit about one some, something else that is di directed related with the pneumatography. That would be the pneuma picture. It's, it's pretty much the same process, much more complex because now is the creation of a drawing or paintings. Okay, um, it is the same idea in which the spirits used ectoplasm from a medium source would use that ectoplasm to produce material that could be imprinted on a paper or on a canvas to create uh, paintings to create in drawings without the use of a medium's hand, without the use of any visible material. Okay, naturally is much more complex because now there is colors. Some of those paints was with tremendous amount of colors. Uh, I particularly never seen one, but I believe in Lily Dell they have a lot 
many pictures uh, that are, are created through this phenomena. They okay. call it precipit. They call it precipitated painting there in Lilydale, and there is a there are two or three of them, very beautiful. One of uh, Abraham Lincoln and uh, and a couple of others. It's it's very impressive. And with colors and everything, right? Yes, yes. Beautiful. So, yeah. So the, the the complexity is 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 much much greater there. So the next slide that we have is pneumatophony. And reading the slide for those who cannot read, pneumatophony or direct voice is another extraordinary medianistic phenomenon. Since these spheres can produce noise and raps, they can naturally make all kinds of cries and vocal sounds, including imitating the human voice, either right at our side or in the air. The spirit sounds manifest in two very different, two different ways. Sometimes as an inner voice that resonates within us, but although the words may be clear and distinct and they are not physically produced. At other times, as, wor as words that are outside of us and which are so distinctly articulated that the may seems to be come from someone standing right beside us. Mediums who are able to produce this phenomenon, an example over here is the medium Kathleen Gullier that produces ectoplasm around the trumpet that would be used to form an etheric and amplifier. So what is it? Is the oral or vocal manifestation of a spirit without the use of vocal apparatus of a medium or any other visible instrument? Okay, it's important that we, you that you mention it, that any other visible instrument. Okay. Um, this this is very well described in the book The Missionaries of Light in the. Andrea Luis described how the mentor Andrea Luis in that uh, Alex Alexandre in that case was able to collect in his hand a small, a small amount of some fluidic plaster, as uh, um, Andrea Luis called in the book, that we would understand as being the ectoplasm, and with that he was able to form what would be described by Andrea Luis, who was a medical doctor, as a human vocal apparatus, a, hum, a, a, a human throat, so to say, with vocal cords that resemble exactly how a vocal cords um, in our physical body looks like. And with that, he would be able to, to produce sounds in the spiritual world that could be heard by us in, in the material world. So it says that Alexander manipulated that material in a deep, in deep concentration and made a human-like vocal apparatus, including vocal cords. Um, by speaking through that material, then uh, the humans in the room could hear his voice as if he was himself an incarnate spirit there. Um, any questions there? So keep in mind that all those phenomena require the presence, the presence of a medium of physical effect. All, all those phenomena requires um, the ectoplasm. We're gonna go back and to talk a little bit about ectoplasm again. Uh, for those who missed it last last time, last month, so so they know what are we talking about here, okay? I think I go to the next, if no questions. And then, and this just a slide that says Andrea Luis also describes the phenomenon occurring in the spiritual realm, when the spirit of Mathilde echoes her crystalline voice 
through an assembly composed of spirits situated in the inferior regions to the use of an improvised troth. We often talking about that there is mediumship in the spiritual world. And that sounds a little bit way too abstract to us. But if you imagine there are different spheres of different level of vibrations of different density of, um, of mind creation, so to say, it is reasonable to expect that some of those differences of density may be incompatible to one or another spirit. So a highly evolved spirit may have tremendous difficulty to communicate with us who lives in this lower zone called planet Earth, or the spirits associated with this planet Earth. So this highly, highly evolved spirit may make use of less evolved spirit to transmit their messages. And this is mediumship, that is slightly less evolved spirit is being a medium, has been an intermediary. And if there is this kind of intermediation, so to say, of, of spirits, that, cannot, can, that can also be the intermediation using um, instruments. As we're going to see, hopefully later on today, spirits make, make use of instruments telephone, tape recorder to communicate with us. If the spiritual world is much more develop, developed, if he uh, is a bad cop of what has the spiritual world, we wouldn't expect that the spiritual world they could produce um, instruments for communication much better, much better than we, we can hear. And Andrea Luis explained in this case that a high level of the spirit made the use of, of their own things over there. And I'm, I'm not gonna say there's ectoplasma, I don't believe it's ectoplasma, whatever, what they have there in the spiritual world to form um, a vocal apparatus that she, could, that she could speak and would be comparable with the density of that lower regions that she wants to com communicate with. Because very often is is really a, a question of um, compatibility, right? Um, a spirit with is highly highly uh, evolved has an extremely ethereal, extremely etherealized um, spiritual body would have a tremendous difficulty associated with more dense. Uh, uh, wars, the more dense environments. So they would make use of mediumship of many types, including a more physical phenomena as the one described by Andalus, by this uh, evolved spirit Matilde. Does it make sense? Okay. Now we come to a, to a topic of the discussion here that deals a lot with, in my perception of the slides, with mediums themselves. And what we make, we as the society in general, the community in general makes of mediums, especially in dealing with physical phenomenon. So I'm going to read the slides so everyone knows what I'm talking about. The spirit of John King. The spirit of John King was said to be the spirit of the Wesh Buccaneer Henry Morgan, who died in 1688. King made his first science appearance in 1852 and became a popular fixture in the sciences of the Devonport brothers and Eusapio Palladino. 
He was first reported at the home of Jonathan Coombs in Athens County, Ohio. Coombs and his family hosted not only King King, but fifth of his relatives, including uh, the daughter Katie. Katie gained her uh, greatest fame as the spirit guide of the medium Florence Cook. As for her spectral father, John, he made literally hundreds of appearances with the different mediums, but as best known for his manifestations with the Davenports. Uh, that, that is what uh, Arthur Cullen Doyle explains to us in the book, History of Spiritualism, when he describes the phenomenon of direct voice transmitted through a trumpet materialized by the spirit of John King at Jonathan Coon's farms, uh, farms in Ohio, USA. So what this like saying here that uh, the spirit of um, John King used to form this uh, vocal apparatus using the ectoplasm of present mediums. And apparently this um, Mr. Devonport was a medium of physical phenomena. And this, um, this spirit used to provide communications over there and seems to be a big time show off spirit. It was show off in every, every opportunity that he had, he would show himself of many, many, many sciences, which naturally opened rooms for questionings, you know, um, of, of many investigators who investigate deeply some of those mediums. Um, give the next slide, please. One of those spirits, uh, one of those mediums highly investigated was Nina Marjorie Stinson, uh, a grandson, that she was uh, going to read the slides here and then a comment. Uh, it reads, Margaret ranks as one of the most thoroughly investigated and controversial mediums of the 20th century. Um, physical research researchers put her, put the ever cooperative woman's in uncomfortable situations in case her in awkward contra uh, contraptions and sometimes would, would her in enough uh, adhes adhesive tape that make her look like a mummy. In spite of such laborious, laborious effort to disprove the validity of the phenomena, M Margaret Grandin again and again materialized the spirit and performed outstanding feats of psych psychokinesis or mind over matter. Here is where I like to open a little parenthesis and see something of, they should be stressed and perhaps re is one of the reasons that mediumship of physical phenomena is not so, not so much used these days. Spirits like, uh, mediums, I'm sorry, mediums like this one, Nina, uh, the, fo uh, the, the, the Fox sisters themselves, um, Florence Cook, Paladino, many, many mediums of uh, physical phenomena. They were so strongly scrutinized that it becomes almost unhuman what they have done to those mediums. The truth is, once the sciences started in, in the 1850s and become popular in both in France and here in the United States up to the, I don't know, the early, from the 1850s to the early 1900s, 1910s or so. Now there was tremendous amount of, of mediums of physical phenomena showing up all over the place and performs all kinds of activities. And that formed basically three groups of individuals. The ones who would have the blind faith, the, you know, the phenomenon happens, therefore it comes from the spirits, no questions asked, that's it, and no, that is a, a radical position that may lead to fanaticism, some, some, something that you would not suggest. 
but on the other hand, it would create another group of individuals on the far left. If the first group is says on the far right, the other group would be on the far left. Those ones say uh, the, phenomena, the phenomena happens, but it's not a real phenomenon, it's a fraud. It cannot be spiritual, there are no spirits, and they you do everything in their power to disprove the phenomena as being spiritual. And there are, there were these investigators that their, their job was there to, to find the fraud, to find the physical reasons for the phenomena, the material reasons for the phenomena. And these individuals are the, were the ones who would scrutinize those mediums. They would put these mediums to unhuman uh, experiments. And my personal opinion, some of those mediums were so eager to prove themselves, to prove that the, the their true mediums, they were not frauds, they were not, pro, not creating anything on their own. They were so eager to prove the existence of, of spirits that they make some silly mistakes and they got caught. Okay, so to that, um, to that I mean that there were true real mediums that felt so much pressure, so much need to prove the phenomena, that when the ph phenomena was not happening, they would make some mistake and create something. And since they were so intensively investigated, they end up get caught. And you get caught once, that goes your reputation, that goes the reputation of the, the phenomena itself, okay? And, and of course, there is a third group, the group in the middle, who would say that the ones that I suggest everyone should be is, you no, know, you present me the facts, you show me the evidences, and I will come with my own conclusions. I see what I see, I hear what I hear, and I am able to use my own intelligence and come to my own conclusions. I like to believe that those in the middle are the ones who would likely become spiritists because those ones who are willing to use reason above all things. And I also think that this is one of the reasons that the physical phenomena is not used as often. Um, as Kardec have said, spiritism does not need to prove anything to anyone, and that's spiritism. And I would say that the phenomena also does not need the aval of science. It's there. Investigations being done fairly will find, will reach their conclusions. Uh, this, this lady herself, um, Mrs. Stinson, wasn't the nicest of the persons anyway, but she had done so much work that took strong evidence that the, the phenomenon was real. But because of her personality, this is a woman who first was married to a poor person when she, read, when she met this rich doctor, Dr. Grant's son, she abandoned the, the poor man who had married this you know, Dr. Grant, who was a socialite in Boston, a very wealth man and become you now one of the socialite in the in the in, in the in the Boston society Boston society and later on she got involved with this phenomena and she said she got involved with the phenomena because her husband has such a fear much older than her fear of death that she started tried to communicate with the death to try to ease him and that's where when she start with that she discovered the phenomena and, went, and, and start to show off also. Apparently she, was, she would get many of the Boston rich people in, her, in, in their houses and perform all, 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 the, all the stuff. And um, apparently she was 
caught a couple of times um, with some tricks, which she insists that um, the physical uh, evidence that investigators uh, found was placed there by the investigator themselves. Which basically is like, there are, there are those investigating the phenomena and those investigating the phenomena need to be investigated themselves to make sure that during the investigation, they were not uh, adultering the facts. It's like if a policeman comes into my house now and says that I that he are looking for drugs and they bring them drugs themselves and show me, you see, I found this drug in your house. Right, so there is a, um, back and forth accusations of some of those meals at that time and those investigators and those things would be published in, in, in the newspapers and would really damage um, the life of some of those mediums. So there was a back and forth accusation that the, the mediums were fraudulent and, and the mediums firing back that no, the investigators are the one who was fraudulent. Right, and probably the truth is in between. Probably both have a piece of truth on that. Um, fact is that things cooled off in term, when it comes to medium, uh, mediumship of physical phenomena. And um, I'm going now to, you can go to the next slide. Unless anybody has a question, please go ahead. Uh, Elmo. Yep. I sort of have a very generic question. I was waiting for the right moment to place it. It's a tricky question, if I might say so. Uh, in your opinion, what is the relationship between ectoplasm and perispirit? Okay, so the way that I use um, the example or the analogy last week was ectoplasm being soap, right? And the physical world being water and the spiritual world being oil or lipids. They do not mix. So you need something in between, you need the process of saponification. If you put hand, your hands in a bucket of oil, you can wash your hands with plain water as long as you want the oil going to stay there. They do not mix. So what do you do? You pick up a piece of soap, the chemical phenomenon of saponification happens, soap allows water and oil to mix and can clean up your hand. So to me, ectoplasm is exactly that, is this, is this compound that allows the, the interaction of the two planes of existence. Okay. Um, ectoplasm is produced as much as we believe now uh, in the physical way, you know, in the mitochondrion, uh, but it has a relationship with the pay spirit, especially with the so-called so uh, Tala Buddhika, which is one of the layers of the pay spirit that I'm going to talk about later. Is that, is that exactly your, your question? Uh, uh, maybe partially. I don't know if I should wait your, your next explanation, but anyway, uh, uh, I understand, or, or, or no, let's say understand is not a good question. Yeah, not a good place. Okay, I'll wait and I'll ask later when you touch the, the part of the Paris spirit because. Okay. Uh, um, oh, wait, thank you. So I'm going to come in the area of materialization of spirits. And this slide will show the pictures of uh, on one side is the medium. Um, Chico Xavier, 
with the medium of his effect spatial tingle produce this gigant amount of ectoplasm and and this ectosperm is being picked up by a, a spirit right behind of spatial tingle that's completely covered of ectoplasm which gives that spirit now a very palpable visible physical appearance that is the process of materialization and on the side of the picture is the spirit of, of uh, Kate King uh, in the house of William Scrook. In the book, in the domain of mediumship, chapter 28, I'm going to read what um, Andrea Luis Mentor Aulus tells him regarding to this topic. In this chapter, the almost the end of the book, and Eloise explained that they almost finished, but you would not live without being trying to see a little bit of physical phenomenon happens because it could provide some good lessons to him. And remember this book, The Domain of Leadership, is a book when Andrea Luis comes basically to one in spirit center and uh, or to a few spirit center, but mostly one. And his um, topic of studies was basically mediumship. He studied the phenomena from both sides. Um, he studies mediums, studied the, the interaction of mediums and, and, uh, and spirits in this book, which is a fantastic book. I recommend anyone who is interested in mediumship to read, of course. But when he shows his interest in um, in the physical phenomena, Andrea Luis tells him this. I'm going to read. Bear in mind that I accompany you here to aid the sick. Although many attempts of materialization of forces from our plane have been done on Earth, in general, they are based in the negative attitude of our incarnate brothers. According to our view, only the sick justify effort, efforts of this type, unless it's for dignified and respectable scientific work, which will benefit all mankind. And that pretty much paraphrases what um, Emmanuel have told in a meeting in um, in Pedro Leopoldo, when, when Emmanuel, Emmanuel put an end on Francisco Cano Xavier's um, experience with the physical phenomena, he was also a me, me, medium of physical phenomena, and say, stop that, we come here for the books, the books are important. And when questioned about the physical phenomena, he said that two days, two days at that, what, you know, some 60 years ago by now, the only reason for the use of, of the physical phenomena would be to assist the, to assist the, the sick and for serious um, scientific work. And some very serious scientific work is being done today. And we can go to the next slide now. Um, May I? Yes. Once you are talking about the domains of mediunity, uh, on that particular book, André Luis tells us that ectoplasm is an association of uh, uh, fluids. Fluids from, everything was fluid, for, uh, anyway. Fluids from the superior uh, spiritual planes, fluids from the medium, fluids from the assistants, fluids from the nature itself. In other places, we found that ectoplasma is also is a combination of uh, uh, actual physical material, like maybe parts of the clothes of the person, of the medium, of his body, of the body itself, but also of vital fluid. So I, I go back to my question now that you mentioned this particular book, I had to go back to it. 
uh, is there, uh, are there parts of the perispirit? Whose perispirit? in the formation of the ectoplasm. And is that what? Would that be part of the, uh, uh, of the, uh, how do you say that in English? Duple eterico, of the double, eteric double, how do you say that in English? Double eteric. Of the double eteric. Uh, anyway, uh, you know, where the perispirit comes about in this process of uh, exteriorization to the ectoplasm. Okay, I'm gonna hold on to that. Hold off okay. to that. I'm gonna answer soon. Um, but uh, going there with the, the work of with the ectoplasm, it is produced as much as you know now in terms of production of completely physical. the production of it, the utilization of it is more complex than it goes to different realms, different levels of existence. But the, the production of the, of the ectoplasm itself is purely as much as we understand now or as the theory that I, that I accept the most reasonable is completely physical. And yes, I agree with you. There are different theories out there, and um, especially if you go outside of spiritism and the spiritualist realm, and and you look especially at um, esoteric sciences, you you find a, a different origins. Um, I favor, for what I have read so far, um, this one, and that's the one that Das you put. Uh, often in his book. That's the one that Dr. Fructoso uh, brings in his own book. Uh, and so what I mean is I'm using um, spiritists who are intellectually speaking also very well prepared. These are medical doctors. These are people who do intensive readings and, and work and in, they, they took this as the most likely theory. I kind of followed them, but not only because them, because to me personally, this one that is more reasonable. is a byproduct of the production of, of ATPs and therefore every being that produces ATPs as, a, as the a source of energy uh, will produce um, ectoplasm. Who is this, Desio? Desio and Dolly. And the book? Uh, Transdimensional Physiology. Thank you. And also uh, Enani Guimarães in, in the book, uh, Morte, Renascimento, Evolução. Thank you, Amo. So going back to the slide here. Uh, this now show a picture, is, picture of another materialization of spirit. The spirit's name or presented with the name of Sister Josepha. It's just a picture of a picture of a medium of a spirit covered with a white mant, a white cloth like appearance which is likely um, ectoplasm. So the term materialization is commonly referred refer to as being synonymous with ect ectoplasmy. If, the rigorously, uh, it, if we rigorously adhere to scientific terminology, we could say that materialization only exists when the ectoplasmic phenomenon results in tangibility or solidification of forms. Materialization is a phenomenon of physical effects where the spirit becomes visible to the attendees of a meeting independent of whether they, of whether they are clairvoyant or not, if you are seeing mediums or not. Um, again, all the physical phenomena are 
perceivable by our physical senses. Okay, so all the physical phenomena, to be a physical phenomenon, it, it, it needs to be perceived by our physical senses. So naturally, if you're talking about apparitions, it has to be visible by our physical eyes unless we are blind. Okay, and then a blind person may see with the spiritual eyes as well, because it's a physical phenomenon. Um, and this is another, another picture that shows the materialization. In the book, Teoria da, da Mediunidade, Zalmino Zizeman described uh, a, a physical phenomenon that he uh, was able to witness in which a medium, we're gonna see later, uh, and it's gonna probably I'm going ahead of myself here, in which a, a, a medium of physical phenomena goes into a chamber, and in, in this chamber, um, under tremendous amount of vigilance of that group, tremendous amount of concentration of that group, um, the medium goes into a trance, and during the trance, there is a separation of spirit per spirit. And it's, it is that point that there is tremendous amount of um, ectoplasm emanating from, from that medium, primarily from the, um, from the oral, e, oral no, mouth, nose, ears primarily, but also from the umbilicus area and also some from the chest and also some from the tip of the fingers. I try to, to look about tip of the fingers. I mean, how does that happen? But it's been described not only in this book, but in, by many other books. And I try, to me, it makes sense that come out from orifices and the umbilicus that is in itself a somewhat closed orifice. But there is no holes in the finger, so somebody going to ask me, I don't have an explanation. But I know the holes of our body, I can see it happening. And I can see it happening in front of the fingers also, I just can't explain it. And this, this ectoplasm was coming from this, this medium, now in trends, com completely um, for front of us would be completely unconscious on a deep sleep if you want. All those, all those um, whitish jelly-like um, fluid would go and go on the floor below right to the medium and, and make as if it was a bed sheet, a white bed sheet, just laying over there. And from the middle of it, something start to come up and bring that ectoplasm up until it seems to be an erected person underneath of that. And then this bed sheet, so to say, that this white cloth it starts to adhere to that thing that is, under, that is underneath and go forming a human appearance. In the beginning, very, I would say, amorphic, with not a clear um, form of a human face, of human arms, but slowly, it seems like this go deeper and more and more impregnating to that, um, to that thing that is underneath that cloth of ectoplasm until it forms a completely very distinguishable, very morphological human appearance of someone right there. There was a medium was going to, uh, there was a spirit, I'm sorry. There was a spirit that was going to perform um, psychosurgery as they call, to perform a surgery. So, in these pictures of Miss Josepha, you can see pretty much that, but it's a more incomplete form. It seems like this ectoplasmic cloth 
did not fully adhere to the petty spirit of the spirit, or in this case, uh, Sister Josepha, or because that's what she intended, that's how she wanted to show herself, or, or perhaps because the quality, now here is not only quantity, if you remember last, last, last time we spoke, we spoke of the necessity of quantity of ectoplasm to, um, to allow the appearance, to, to allow materialization take place. But now we can talk about quality, quality of the ectoplasm to provide a more human-like morphology of the spirit, or maybe because that's what that particular spirit wanted. We, we don't know. Yeah. Okay, next. Okay, so this is a picture to just describe um, the phenomena of ectoplasm, ect ect in which um, this particular medium is given up some sort of um, fluid through its mouth appears to be nebulous, whitish material. As it seems to have a solid form, a form a more of a gas kind of form. And the ectoplasm has been described may have different kind of plasticity being a having this uh, quality, he appears to, be, as appears to be more of a nebulous, like a, like a gas type of appearance. And it reads uh, in the context of psychic sciences, it has a different specific meaning. It designates the fluidic substance that emanates from the body of certain mediums to their natural orifices, such as the nose or the mouth, and serves in the in the creation of the phenomena of physical effects, especially those whom, those known as materializations. Uh, I think this, this slide a little bit misplaced because you had that spoken about ectoplasm and this, pic, this picture in this, I try to explain what is uh, the ectoplasm. And here again is just another um, explanation of what is ectoplasm and giving the semantic origin of the word. The word ectoplasm formed from the Greek vocabulary ectos means outside, uh, exterior, and plasma from passein, when means to give shape, designates in biology the peripheral part of the ectoplasm, the protoplasm of the cells, excluding the nucleus. So in biology, the ectoplasm is the cytoplasm, as you can see in that picture over there, minus the granules. So imagine that the planet Earth would be a cell you take all the, um, all the land as the nucleus, and you take the, all the oceans as being the cytoplasm, the ectoplasm will be the ocean minus all the fish and plants. So basically, the liquefied part that forms the, the the, the cytoplasm, just take off all the granules, all the little things that are mixed in that fluid. Just like you take the ocean and take off, out of the ocean all the fish and plants. That would be the, the ectoplasm, okay? Um, just going through it because it's there but has no significance for our story right now. Okay, so here, um, that's in the book, um, The Domain of Mediumship, in which Andal Louise is, is witness the phenomena of, um, of physical phenomena. And, and the picture says, the medium is 
uh, it started expelling ectoplasm for every pore. It appeared as flexible paste similar to a glutinous jelly and semi-liquefied come, come out, of, out in great quantity to the natural orifices, particularly the mouth, uh, nose and ears. Uh, next. Ectoplasm is situated between dense and pure spiritual material as a product of emanation from the soul passing through the body. It's a source not only of the human soul, but also of all forms of natures, of nature. And that's why I say that to the theory that I, I like best, uh, every living, um, being that uses ATP as a form of energy, like we human beings, you know, all that we do in terms of breathing to get oxygen in our body, and more importantly, expel CO2, but that's a different conversation. But let's talk about the oxygen, to get oxygen into our body and to eat to get all the food that we eat to be broke down and, and spare carbohydrates to be transformed into glucose is to get those two little things, glucose and uh, oxygen inside of uh, the mitochondrion, which is one of the organelles into, into the cells, the part of the cytoplasm that we just spoke. Once they get that you get, when they, they, they meet themselves inside of the mitochondrion, oxygen and, and glucose, it, it generates, let's say, a kind of an explosion. And out of that explosion comes what the body uses as energy. So energy that everything that you use, the whole energy that we use for everything that you do, we are utilizing this ATP with adenosine triphosphate, okay? But very often when we produce a chemical reaction with the aim of a next uh, product, something outside happens also. When you, when you create the combustion of gasoline in our car, you create the energy to move the car but we also create pollutants, you know, create heat, you know, the car gets hot, and other things happening, right? In the production of ATP, the energy to move us, some other thing happens as well as a byproduct. And one of the things would be the ectoplasm. So the ectoplasm would be purely of a physical nature, the, the genesis of it, the utilization of it, the manipulation of it, then it becomes uh, more complex. Okay, and and what um, differenti differentiate mediums of physical phenomena from all of us and the cockroach and every no other animal or uh, plant that produces ATP is what we need to investigate. Okay. Next. It says over here in this picture, and the pictures just look like um, spider web or something like that. Ectoplasm assumes extremely variable aspects from a tenuous form that maintain its visibility to the solid state organized in complex structures such as materialized spirits, ectoplasm, ectoplasmic generis. Between these two extremes, it can pass through a varying states, gaseous, plasmatic, flocculent, amorphous, milky, uh, fil filamentous, liquid, etc. It's just telling us that the ectoplasm may assume many, many different forms, shapes, qualities, being extremely uh, plastic, it can be manipulated and 
converted or, or shaped in many, many different ways and, and forms. The question that we have to ask is does those form, those shapes, a direct influence of the medium or is manipulation of the, of the spiritual world? And according to Dr. Fuktuos, it's both. And also according to, um, to Andrea Luis, the mind of the, um, of the medium can strongly influence the ectoplasm. But not only that, the collective minds of an audience, of those who are witness the phenomena, can interfere with the ectoplasm as well. For that reason, um, physical phenomena, when it happens, when it happens in, in good faith, it's in an environment that is extremely well protected, is an, is an environment in which the, um, the audience, those present, must understand and respect and know their responsibility for the success or unsuccess and even for the risks that the, the mediums are exposed. Because with their mind, the collective mind of the audience can affect that ectoplasm. And directly, the medium, because the medium, and Andrea Luis says that in uh, Domain of Mediumships, that's very important. Although the medium is in a deep trance, although the medium is, seems to have its own thing there, it's still somewhat connected with the ectoplasm. And the comparison that he makes is the fetus or the baby being a, a attached to the mother, although in reality, the baby is its own entity, do, entity doing its own thing, totally dependent on the mom, of course, but it's even in the physical world, in, even in embryology, it's his own being doing its own, th own thing, but mindset directly connected to the mom. The ectoplasm is still very much connected to the, to the medium and vice, and vice versa. Therefore, the risks of this kind of mediumship and therefore the responsibility that it must be take for anyone witness those kind of phenomena. And in my personal opinion, therefore, another reason that this thing is not so much in being used these days. Questions? What is next? And I think here's where um, most of the questions of Lu Lewis comes from. And also the book, uh, Domains of Mediumship. For the materialization of spirits or objects, the specialized spirits cast three types of fluids in a work that reveals the proficiency in a, a specialized technique. So spell, and then Luis speaks of uh, three types of fluid. And so does uh, Dr. Frutuoso in this book that for those who are interested in fortunes are in Portuguese, actually let me get and give you the name of it, is called A Face Oculta da Medicina, or the occult face of medicine. And um, the author is Paulo Cesar Fructuoso. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, John. Let me just go back to the book here where it, it talks about that. Just one minute. Uh, no, it's going to be too hard for me to find it out. But anyway, he talks about three, um, three three types of fluids, so to say. And, and yes, Luis, everything's fluids, 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 fluids. And the definition of fluids becomes extremely vague when the word becomes so used so in so many different ways. So we're talking about uh, the fluid way represented the superior and 
sort of forces of the spiritual plane. Uh, fluid B the, uh, is the ectoplasm itself. Uh, and fluid C consistent of energy stank from Earth, the rest of environment, vegetables, water, plants, and everything else. Um, let's try to break this down a little bit. Fluid A, the most sublime, of course, the one that comes from the spiritual sphere, okay. It's what they bring with them, unrelated, not produced by us, as not with us. The spirits bring that with them for the phenomena to take place. The medium does not produce it, okay? That's one, 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 one material, so to say, one element. The other one is ectoplasm itself, or the substance that is produced in the physical world by a medium or by other mediums, okay? This ectoplasm is the medium of physical phenomena there that will provide the ectoplasm. The ectoplasm can also be gathered from Others, millions of physical phenomena who are perhaps not even aware that they have such an ability that will be taken without them not even knowing that they, uh, they are donating such substance and can be taken as well from other um, living things that produces ATP and therefore have a byproduct of, of, uh, of ectoplasm. Okay, so that is the, but from our discussion now, it comes from the medium. So you have what comes from the spirits, A, what comes from the minus B, and then we're talking about a fluid C, and that becomes a little bit more confusing, more difficult, that's what is he talking about here. Elmo. Yes. Uh, you're getting the point that I, I wanted. Um, so may I understand that your a component here is an essential part of the production and management, let's say so, of the ectoplasm. With, without no. fluid A, there is no, no materialization. No. no, yes, it is, a, is, a, is, a, is an essential component of materialization, not ectoplasm. Okay, of materialization, good. Yes, absolutely. Not so, and is fluid A actually part of the perispirit of the, you know, espírito uh, uh, desencarnado, um, ethereal spirit? That I don't know if it's, <laughs> I don't know if it comes from the perispirit of the spirit or is another element that they bring with them to produce the phenomena. I don't know if it's, you know, we're gonna make, we're gonna, we're gonna make some something in your house. We invite me, and, and I and I bring the fish to make, to cook some fish. Good I point. Good me, point. But it's not me. It's not me. I don't produce it from my own, but I bring with me. I don't know if this fluid A is something that is essential part of the petty spirit of those of the spirits or if it's a substance that they bring with them. My guess, as wide guess as anyone else, it is a substance that they bring with them. Okay, but it's just a wild guess. But but the, I'm not, like, just for the sake, uh, allow, me, allow me to do a, uh, to make a question. Um, so ectoplasm is just just the medium. It, it, it emerges from the medium himself or herself. Period. Fluid A is from, from the uh, spiritual forces and fluid C is from the earth. But ectoplasm per se is from the medium. Am I correct? Yeah. Okay. Okay. It's just for the purpose of analysis. Okay. Yeah. And then we have fluid, fluid C that which reads over here 
constituting energies take from Earth, terrestrial environment, vegetables, water, minerals, etc. And the way that Dr. Fruitwoz explains this fluid C, he goes point go back to some something called I'm sorry. Point zero energy. For those who have a little understand of uh, quantum physics, point zero energy is the energy that moves everything at all times. Point zero energy is the energy that would allow vibration of atoms of electrons even at Kevin uh, zero. And if you know what Kevin zero is, this is the absolute. That's absolute zero. zero uh, temperature. You can use degrees because it's absolute is absolute. So Kevin zero is the equivalent of minus 273.15 uh, degrees uh, centigrades. You mean uh, Kelvin, right? Kelvin. Yeah. What am I saying? Kelvin. Yeah. Kelvin zero, which minus 273.15 Point fifteen centigrades, which equal a minus four hundred and fifty six something Fahrenheit. So it's cold. In quantum physics, or in the big physics, once you reach that level of 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 the Kelvin zero, there would be completely. Uh, absence of vibration or movement. Things would be so densely together that nothing would be able to move. In quantum physics, that is this uh, point zero energy, which says that even at, at uh, Kelvin zero, there would still be vibration of electrons, meaning that nothing would ever cease to, to vibrate. And that theory is by a um, physicist called uh, Puthoff, which he says that this energy is self-renewable and endless. And that is the only way that physics can explain the universe. The Kelvin zero is an, is an abstract. And no one was ever made to, was ever able to get there. And they think it's impossible to get there because it would, would require an infinite amount of energy. An infinite amount of energy, it's only God will say, <laughs> right? So it's an abstract. Um, the coolest, the coolest that I was able to make in lab laboratory could not reach this Kelvin zero yet. It couldn't, it could let very close to it, but not to it yet. And just as curiosity, those low temperatures they reach in labs on here, as of now, is believed to be the coolest that there is in nature, meaning that. Anywhere in the universe, the farther that you can go out, when the temperatures get extremely, extremely cold, is still not the Kevin zero. And the labs, human labs, have produced temperatures that are even cooler than the coolest space in the universe, as much as we know now, of course. Okay. Why I'm, I'm bringing this point? The thing is Dr. Fructuoso believes that this fluid C is a manipulation of this energy, this energy of vibration 
of other electrons, basically. We know that vibrations, we used to believe that the electrons you know, go around and around the, the, the nucleus of the atom. Now you know that does not, not exactly like that. They, they are always in, move, in, in motion, but not necessarily around and around the atoms, right? The, the nucleus, I'm sorry. This energy that provides the vibration, the movement of electrons, Dr. Futos thinks is the energy that they utilize for the phenomena of the dematerialization. So I use those three things. And, and we're not gonna expand much on this, but in, in, in this book, he makes a comparison of um, the atomic bomb that you know, that destroyed Hiroshima and Nagasaki, that the amount of energy required for physical phenomena far exceeds the amount of energy that was um, used on that explosion, on, on that atomic event. And that again puts you to reflect on the responsibility of using of, of, of these energies. They are they condensed those fluids, those 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 energies that we call over here fluid C, and in association of ectoplasm, and in association with whatever they bring from the spiritual world, then they are able to perform materialization. This is is a lot of science. Probably you guys have questions that I don't have answers, but you can try. Okay. So Elmo, this, I, yes. I would have hundreds of questions, but this has been an outstanding class. Thank you so much for sharing so much with us. Uh, you're going to go on, right? Yes. <laughs> Thanks. Um, so this is like now, let me read for those who <laughs> can see it. This is again, uh, Andrea Luis uh, is witnessing a um, a session of materialization. And in the picture it shows the tremendous amount of work that is done in the spiritual world, that they bring their own machine, their own instruments, their own, their own apparatus um, that's to be utilized. In the little chamber in the room, you see that there is a medium laying down with, with spirits assisting in the concentration uh, and the protection and the um, somewhat dematerialization of, of, the, of the medium that will produce the ectoplasm required for the phenomena. And outside what you see over there is pretty much a table that is to be, to be used to put a sick human incarnate being who will receive a, uh, a spiritual treatment. Could be uh, a spiritual um, surgery or anything of that sort. In this particular case, also in the domains of the mediumship, in this session, they brought in two women who were sick that needed the treatment that uh, our physical sciences are not able to help them. Okay, so it reads that the, material, the, the meaning of materialization requires a work of preparation, which we will call first phase very intensive of incarnate and discarnate, especially for the later, especially for the discarnate, okay? Uh, the spirit supervised initially take the following steps. One, isolation of the location of the sessions in a circle measuring more than 20 meters B, the Ozonization of the atmospheres. See the destruction of mental parasites. The isolation of the medium places is done to prevent access of soft and perturbed entities or entities in 
disharmony with the good. The relative ozonization of the inner area is necessary as the as a bactericidal procedure. The ectoplasm or neutral uh, energy that, that will be abundantly extracted from the medium. Can you go up, Ro? Or can you read if you can? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay. Sorry. Um, the relative ozonization of the inner area is necessary as a bactericidal procedure. The ectoplasm or neural energy that will be abundantly extracted from the medium cannot bear the intromission of certain microbial elements without dire consequences. What is that word? Ozonization? Yes. Yeah, ozone is, is, is a gas, is a... It's a radiation, basically, that, that, that destroys bacteria, that destroy microorganisms. That's one of the, the many theories that, that says that it can help uh, clean up an, an ambient air or water. Uh, there is some particles that is put in the water to create a ozone. Ozone mm -hmm. is, is O3, okay? It's, Oxygen is O2, right? It's two atoms of oxygen. Ozone is O3. O3 is quite lethal. And then we see that the break, the break of the ozone layers is creating a big problem of, um, of climate change on Earth. is because it's so dense that it, it kind of breaks down or prevents excess of um, sunlight to reach Earth. So although it's very good up there to protect us, it's, it's when it's too close to us, it's not good because it's very toxic for just about all lives. Mm -hmm. It can kill virus and everything else. So they use that, whatever they break with them to create a ozone layers that will kill bacteria and everything in the air. Uh, allow me a question, Elmo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Under what circumstances do we need materialization? Again, as I said in the very beginning, um, by the words of uh, Aulus and the words of uh, Emmanuel, in the assistance of the sick and in very serious, reliable scientific work. No other cases. Oh, okay. In the only cases, okay. Oh. So yeah, that's, why I make, yeah. that's why I make the point of going back into all those mediums of the mat materialization of the past who was materialized spirits just to show the spirits and materializing um, things just to, just to prove that they can do it, just to prove their existence with good faith, with good intentions, but still, what do you get from it? Exactly, exactly. Okay, exactly. You, you proved to me that they exist, so what? Yeah, right? exactly, yes. Exactly, um, That's, that, was my, that was my line. But, yeah. but if you could provide medical assistance where our physical science or physical medicine cannot yet do, or even perform something, that, let's say, an appendectomy for someone in parts of this world that unfortunately does not have access to a, to a hospital, to general surgery, to have to perform our kind of appendectomy, it is useful, it's helping someone. Or it. when you're doing yeah. some very serious uh, scientific work in order to understand better our interaction between, between the two planes of existence and how can we, by this interaction, help one another um, the two sides uh, it. matter. It, it, could, it could be viewed as a, as a last resort measure. Yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah, yeah, because, you know, that's a last resort measure, yeah. Yeah, I would agree with that. The fact is, it's, it, it's rare these days. Uh, this, I keep mentioning this, his name, uh, Paulo Celso Frutoso, is one of the workers of this 
um, Frei Luis Sanctuary in Rio de Janeiro, where they perform physical phenomena on a, on a regular basis. They're doing that for many, many years, and uh, they're still doing that uh, under very rigorous um, vigilance. It's located in, in basically in the middle of the jungle in Rio. Okay, not in the jungle, the jungle, but it's you know in a forest. Okay, you have to go up a hill and it's surrounded by trees and everything else. Um, they have very specific uh, guidelines for those who participate and for those who want to participate. Um, restriction of diet and everything else. Um, some things that I understand completely, some of the things that I do not understand as the, they all must wear white. They cannot wear any other kind of kind of color of clothes. Don't quite understand very well that one, but they cannot eat meat for at least 72 hours prior to the to the meeting. No, ideally don't even less, but a minimum of 72 hours prior. Uh, they definitely cannot consume alcohol, uh, tobacco at least 72 hours uh, prior to those meetings. They are very strong uh, on those guidelines. And for those I have understand, they are allowed to eat fish because of nitrates. Nitrates assist somehow in the production of the phenomenon, but that's a little bit more complex also. But except for this, um, this specific place and some others, um, scientific work being done, I, I personally don't see any need for, for materialization these days. Very good, very good, thank you. Okay. Other mediumistic manifestation of physical effects are physical healing, psychometry, luminous manifestations, instrumental communications, and etc. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about of um, especially healings um, in this book and the theory of the mediunidade. Um, the author, uh, Mr. Zizerman, he he differentiates the, he calls it the um, spiritual therapies. In the spiritual therapies, he differentiate um, surgical therapies into psychosurgeries and spiritual assisted, that's my translation, uh, surgeries. Some of the surgeries and like the ones it was performed by the famous um, José Arigó that uses um, physical instruments, use seizure, seizures, um, knives, um, generally no asepsy whatsoever, no sterilization of anything whatsoever, uh, not in a specific place, uh, it's done anywhere. Usually his instruments would be inside of an old uh, can of margarine or something like that. They would carry along with him with no specific <laughs> sterilization. That what I'm saying, the request a tremendous amount of faith of those who exposed those surgeries, the tremendous amount of trust to say that that would be okay. Then I don't know if most people would these days. Uh, so in the spirit are going to operate on me through a medium who did not wash his hands prior to it, who used the, the same instrument, he just used someone else without any water gonna use on me now. So there's a lot of things to be questioned. It does require a tremendous amount of faith of the patient to undergo those kind of surgeries. Um, this um, Jose Arigo, was very much studied also. The students, uh, uh, um, investigators here from the United States, from Europe, went to investigate him. And no one was ever able to get any fraud, no one to get, to get anything that um, could not be labeled as spiritual by, by nature. And um, 
in one of the cases that um, Zimmerman offers in his book is one investigator, I forgot his name, from uh, the United States, went over there at Congonha in Minas Gerais to, to see him as, as this investigator approached him and it was already the uh, was already the doctor, um, what's his name? Uh, what's his name? I forgot Fritz. the name of Yeah, Dr. Dr. Fritz. Fritz. Dr. Fritz is always Dr. Fritz, a German, um, a German um, doctor who died during the First World War that assumed the responsibility of, of helping many of those, those surgeries. So when the investigator got there, it was already a Dr. Fritz that was uh, using the body of Dr. Arigo and already presented himself and said, I know you are a doctor, gave the name of the doctor. Uh, and I know that, that you also has on your arm a, a lipoma that you don't want it to be operated because it's very close to some to some nerve, and if there is any mistake, you may use you may lose the the ability of use uh, two or three fingers. I forgot on his hand, and this doctor got uh, shocked because it is all true, as a fact, and he said, "You came in here to investigate me to see if it, what's done here is real. Would you allow me to remove this 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 uh, lipoma for you?" And the doctor didn't have an answer immediately. And so Dr. Fritz asked him, how long do you think it would take um, for this lipoma to be removed in, in your environment, in your um, physical uh, surgeries? And the doctor said, well, it would take about 15 minutes of surgery, you know, from open to close, plus, you know, good amount of time to set up the patient and for sepsia, for everything else, plus all the tests that I have to do it before. And Dr. Fritz told him, what if I can do it for you in less than a minute? <laughs> and, and the doctor at this point didn't know what to do, but he was with um, the person who brought over there, also an American, who so, said, yeah, go ahead. You know? So this, this doctor, this physical doctor opened up his, his shirt and gave him his arm. And Dr. Fritz performed the, the surgery uh, using um, one of those canivetti. And how do you call canivetti, John? Uh, um, oof. Swiss oh, Army knife. Huh? Swiss Army knife. Yeah, the Swiss Army knife, but those you know of it's the interior of Brazil. A folding knife. A folding knife, correct. A folding knife. With a folding knife, you just make a, a little incision over there, uh, express that, that lipoma, took it out right away, uh, pull a little gauze over it, remove the gauze, pass your hand on, and there was a, the tiniest scar that was completely healed, nothing else and uh, gave him the lipoma and said, now you take this back to your hospital and you, and you do a biopsy on it and send me the result. And it was indeed a lipoma with all the, the markings that it could only be his own lipoma, you know, you can do genetic testing and not could be any, anything else. But again, uh, this kind of surgeries requires the, the, the use of some instrument usually is um, the, me the, me the medium, um, you'll be in an absolute state of trance. This trance can be complete, meaning it's co the medium is completely unconscious and sometimes it's subconscious. Um, medical and the spiritual world are very iffy about the subconscious medium because of the, of the risk that the, the medium may use its own mind and do something else other than what is to be done. When it's a completely conscious medium, then the, 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 the doctor, the spiritual doctor, have more, has more freedom to perform the surgeries. Um, there is other type also that is 
the ones that is, that is done in this place that I mentioned to you, um, Frey Luis, in which there is a materialization of the spirit. That is one that is the most dangerous, in which the medium of physical phenomena goes inside a chamber, the, loose, the lights are completely out, it's in darkness. Once the phenomena uh, starts when the, 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 the medium is in a completely trans and it starts to donate its ectoplasms, after that, um, the, the spirit starts to put him, you know, dress himself, so to say, with that ectoplasm. Usually, um, that doctor becomes some kind of lumin luminous, although the place is in darkness, the, now the spiritual doctor covered with ectoplasm that is visible to everyone. Not only visible, is also usually is luminous, radiate some kind of, of, of light, and there those surgeries are performed. Um, what is my time? <laughs> it's already went by 10 minutes somewhere. Oh, <laughs> wow. Really? Yeah. You see, the, you keep track of that. <laughs> Jesus. Okay, so the last thing I'm going to mention here, I'm not going to have time to go through, is instrument communication. Okay. Uh, this ITC, instrumental transcommunication, that it starts it with EVD, which is the electronic voice phenomena. It's a very interesting thing, because now it's spirits trying to make use of communication apparatus to interact with us. So we start with telephone. Um, the most famous and the one the most described that was um, a Swedish doctor. No, he's not a doctor, I'm sorry. He was actually um, a singer of, uh, of opera who had a chronic disease and had to stop singing. So he started to look at other times of art to become a painter, but also was a practitioner ornithologist. I mean, someone who studies birds, but he was not a, um, didn't have a degree on, on the field. And when he was doing some investigation of nocturnal birds in Sweden, he left his, um, recording machine, the at that time was the ones with those tapes, but the decays tapes out there to record um, nocturnal birds singing. And when he wants to listen to it, he heard tremendous amount of human voices, but not only human voices, but also human voices speaking different languages. And through tremendous amount of investigation, um, he concluded there was actually spirits and then um, another doctor who was student of uh, paranormality went to investigate, I forgot his name now, went to investigate with him. They concluded that indeed it was not only human voice, but the human voice was trying to get in touch with him. Uh, the name of this uh, student was uh, Rodav, Konstantin Rodav. You can text, I uh, can look at him online, there's a lot of work done of him. He is perhaps one of the most responsible the formation of all this research on uh, communication from the spirits using um, electronic devices. So now there is evidence of spirits using telephone, fax machines. We don't have, no longer have uh, the tape recorder anymore but there is some communication being used, being done with computer, and there is a tremendous amount of research. Uh, there is one comp there is one society called IPATI, I-P-A-T-I, doing tremendous amount of research in this area. There is a Brazilian woman called Sonia Rinaldi, who is being able to get voices very well now, and now he's trying to get faces. Uh, she also have become very famous when he was, she was able to create a device that apparently are able to show faces of spirits. Uh, and that 
being have been documented and some of those spirits that show up usually young individuals who who, who died at young young age and those mothers look for this woman and this woman was able to and get in contact with those young spirits who died and they present themselves inside of uh, something that should have developed and take pictures uh, of the faces of those spirits. And those, those, those pictures have been shown to those mothers who are absolutely convinced and sure that that's indeed uh, their daughters and sons when, because they recognize the picture so well. This, uh, I would like to talk a lot about that, but the time is up. I'm sorry. Okay, thank you, Elmo. Uh, again, very good. Um, you know, excellent. <laughs> yeah, uh, we we excellent. spoke uh, about the, the the precipitated painting, and uh, I think there is um, there is one here. Uh, yeah, in the in the very second uh, slide, I'm going to share. Yeah. This one, you see, this is the precipitated painting of uh, Abraham Lincoln at the Maplewood Hotel in Libidale. Um, it's very impressive because uh, when you get close to it, there is no sign of brushes or anything. It's, you know, it's, it's really extraordinary when you, when you look at it. So, uh, All right, so... Um, yeah, I think what we yeah. can do is, since I didn't allow any time, um, we can make our prayers complete. If anyone has a question, wants to stay, I don't mind to stay a little longer. Okay, um, so before we, we ask Carol, uh, just a reminder, we have the last uh, lecture of the Spiritist uh, the, the 22nd Spiritist Week of the Tri-State, starting at 2 p.m. today, again in Portuguese, with Carlos Campetti, Sinais dos Tempos, if anyone wants to catch it, is on the Tri-State Spiritist Federation YouTube channel, okay? Uh, next Sunday, which is the first Sunday of the month, we'll be studying um, in the greater world, and then it, it will follow by our Q&A, okay? Um, Carol. Sure. Thank you so much, Elmo. Excellent. Most appreciated. Yeah. Most appreciated. Infinite spirit, divine providence, all our guides, our helpers, our healers, the good spirits, this, the spiritual benefactors who are with us. We give thanks today for the unity that we have witnessed, experienced, being together to receive the blessings of this presentation. We are grateful to have an in-depth and detailed understanding of physical phenomenon. We are grateful to understand the nuance and the, the information that is uh, very well presented for us to have a greater knowledge base. Give thanks to our spiritual benefactors, the good spirits who have helped us today to be able to receive this understanding, this enlightenment, so that we may go ahead and use this in our daily lives, helping us to have a more in-depth understanding of physical phenomenon. We are grateful for the unity that we have created today, and may we continue to do so each week as we go forward. We give thanks to all who have received the blessings that will continue to participate. We are grateful for the peace, the wisdom, the love, the light, and the guidance of Christ. May we continue throughout the week to share this with others as we are able to do so. May we keep ourselves in the highest vibration possible. May we receive the inner peace so that we may be a blessing to others as we share in the goodness of what we have learned. We close now and humbly ask for safety and protection as we go forth to family, friends, loved ones, and coworkers. May our journey be blessed this week and may we share 
with those who may be having difficulties, who may be suffering, those in the physical world as well as the spiritual world. We know that we are guided right now. We feel it, we know it for sure within us. May we use what we have received as blessings, never to underestimate what this knowledge is. We give thanks for the codic codification of the spiritual spiritualist materials. And may we continue to share what we have learned. We close now and humbly ask for the continuation of our prayers, our studies, and mindfulness throughout the week, ever blessed. Go forth now in peace. Go forth now. So be it.